won the Ig Nobel Prize. We thank the Ig Nobel Prize Committee. We thank the Nobel Laureate that awarded this prize to us. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is what won the prize. It's an article by Peter Schmidt and myself on enemas. So inside this, everything started with, with Michael Coe back in the 1970s. So in 1977, Michael Coe, they identified this. So in their separate article, they identified these aspects. And once we had this available in drawings and a rollout by Justin Kerr, then we knew what an enema syringe was. Then we knew what a jug, an enema jug. They don't normally have a handle, but that's the only one we found in the market. And once I found that from the article, and I think it was, I can't remember, it was March, I was able to find a lot of vases. I worked in the Museo Popol Vuh, Universidad Francisco Marroquin. I lived in Switzerland with my Swiss girlfriend and then later moved to uh, Austria for my PhD. So I had access to a lot of museums in Europe. <clears throat> I gave a lot of lectures at museums all over the world. So again, I had access to finding the different vases. So within literally three months, I had tons and tons and tons of stuff on uh, more on enema. So we learned about, again, the enema syringe. You need the syringe or the jug to prove there's an enema ritual. You can have the bibs, you can have everything else, and that helps. There's probably an enema ritual, but it really helps to have the gourds. And these are native gourds, and these are still used today, except today they don't use um, an accessory tube. They use the original tube and they don't use drugs today. So this is just a joke because we still haven't been able to grow these, but here, here's, here's their actual gourds. And we did this as a joke too, but it turns out it's almost the same as, as this. So it, it's a gourd basically that is used. So we learned all kinds of things about enemas, and then I gave a lecture I give lectures for the Institute of Maya Studies. I also give lectures for Atlander. And to one of these, we gave a lecture on enemas. Uh, Jim Reed was the host. And in that, I showed all this material, all, all the photographs and drawings. And then at the end, Barbara McLeod and Donald Hales and Carl Calloway, and I think it was David Bowles. But Bowles is a very good uh, linguist. And, and the others are epigraphers and know the stuff. Because to study the enema ritual, you need to have linguists, you need to have an epigrapher to study the hieroglyphs that are next to the enema jug and on the enema jug. You need an iconographer to sort everything out. And you need ethnopharmacologists like Peter de Schmidt and others to understand what's in the, what's inside this jug what they put in and what they insert up the tail end, okay? Obviously, you have to sit down. I'm not going to do that here because I, I don't do enemas for drugs or anything like that. So, but <laughs> in the 5th to 8th to ninth century, the Maya, the ones you see in, in the paintings, that's not just for your health. That's to lift you up to another part of the universe. It's to expand your mind like the hippies did in the 1960s. And you know, I went to Harvard in the 1960s, so I know a little bit about that, except I don't take LSD and I don't do all that kind of stuff. So I was happy anyway studying the ancient Maya. But during that period, you know, many people took the uh, material out of the toad and all kinds of other natural chemicals are available throughout all of Mesoamerica. We all know that the Aztec took them, but we kind of forget that the Maya had them available too, plus their trade routes. So the Maya, if they didn't have it, they could bring it down from central Mexico because up in, in, up in, in, in Arizona, New Mexico, wherever it was, they traded macaws all the way up to there and, and cacao beans all the way up there. And the Olmecs traded all the way down from Mexico all the way down into Costa Rica. So whatever plant or chemical 
the, the Maya king wanted to learn about the rest of the universe, go up into heaven or down into Shibaba, into hell, all that's available to um, by enemies. Because if you drink the stuff, you vomit all over the place. And they show people vomiting. So drinking was part of the ritual, but the main part, at kind of towards the end of the ceremony, is injecting it with this. And then whatever dreams they had, <clears throat> I'm not into, into practicing that, but what's important to show is the Aztecs did it, every indigenous group, or most indigenous groups in, in South America do it. So, you know, they all do it. And people do it today. I mean, I hate to think of how many people are taking drugs today. Not a good idea. I like my chocolate and uh, regular chocolate, no alcohol in it. And I eat um, food from Whole Foods and Trader Joe's because I like that kind of a fresh, organic food. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the prize, Ig Nobel Prize for Art History, and working together with Peter Schmidt. Working together is very important because two people can have different views. When I once was at Yasha, the president of Guatemala came to Yasha while I was mapping it. And he came with another archaeologist. And so I asked him, I was just curious, I said, you know, there are archaeologists here, you brought another one. And he said, yes, because I want to hear the archaeologists arguing among themselves. And the archaeologist that he brought with him was a very capable archaeologist and somebody I knew was, was a colleague, uh, Sadat. And so we got along well. But we do, every archaeologist, every iconographer, every epigrapher has a slightly different view. And again, at the end of my enema lecture, we had four other people contributing their information. It was very helpful. So it would be great in the future to have an international conference on enemas and have all the epigraphers, all the archaeologists, everybody together in one physical location discussing all this together and then publishing a monumental coffee table book on this. So again, there's a lot more to know. Again, after I gave the lecture, I found some new stuff that I had never, I hadn't seen since the 1970s and 80s. Some, some notes that I had taken back then as I was unloading my stuff from when I lived in Graz for my PhD. So a lot more to come. And next time we want to make a book that's about that thick, okay? We need, we need a coffee table book with many, many contributors. Thank you very much.